Hello everyone, okay, so here we are with a scenery tutorial. This is my first scenery tutorial ever, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using a combination of Photoshop, SketchUp, ADE, and Model Converter X. Uh, we're going to be using these four programs to make a custom ground polygon, or custom ground image, custom ground texture, whatever you want to call it, we're going to be using it. Um, some people like to call this photorealistic ground textures, but I, I don't care. I call them ground polygons because that's what they are. So, what I've got here is uh, I'm, I'm picking on an airport in the UK. When I say picking on, I quite literally mean picking on it because this is where I test most of my new objects, i.e. lights, buildings, blah blah blah. Um, we've got Southampton. <laughs> Echo, Golf, Hotel India, Southampton. Now, I pick on Southampton quite a lot, mainly because I don't like the airport very much, but also because I think it's quite a nice airport. Yeah, you can try and get your head around that one. Now, what I've done in ADE is I have created a generic building. As you can see, it's 150 meters by 40. Now, 150 meters by 40, so 150 meters long, 40 wide. That's exactly what we're going to do in SketchUp. And as you can see, I've got this here. This isn't quite the right size. I need to add 50 meters onto it. So let's just go ahead and do that. 50. Just join on the edges. 50, 50, 50. There we go. Get rid of that line. We don't need it. Find our new midpoint. It's right there. And just drag it straight to the center. We need the exact center. Okay, get rid of that. Now we don't need that. All right, so we now have a 150 by 40 uh, generic building in ADE, and we also have a 150 by 40 slab of material in SketchUp. Now the way SketchUp works, it's very picky with its textures and things like that, but I will recommend this program for anybody wanting, uh, wanting to create scenery. It's super simple. You don't need to work too hard to get some good results and things like that. GMAX, uh, you can do exactly the same sort of routine with this. Um, 50, one, 150 by 40, same routine really. Um, we're just cutting out a couple of middlemen uh, really right here. So yeah, there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that up just a tiny bit so we've got a platform to work with. This way our texture won't flip over when we apply it because we're not applying it directly to the flat surface which is on the ground so our texture would it will want to be the right way around. So yep, yeah, I've made my texture, which is that. All I've done here is I've taken a screenshot of um, Southampton Airport, I've taken a screenshot of one of the aprons. Uh, I've zoomed in quite a bit, it's not the best quality in the world but it'll do. I've sort of highlighted the edges of the parking areas and removed the aircraft from the image itself. That's what I've done. I've then placed this into SketchUp's materials. As you can see, I've just got that on the other screen right there. What we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and apply it. Okay. Now I'm going to make this 40 meters longer. Not 740, 40, there we go. 40 meters longer. That way we should get a perfect, uh, or should I say an almost perfect, um, transition tie-in thingy. Okay. Can't help but notice that the texture is just maybe a little bit too big. I'm not sure. I'm just going to line up with the corners and see where we can go with this. Just zoom in. Corner to corner. Zoom out. Just grow it in size. Do about there. Yep, zoom in again on the corner. Okay, we don't need that anymore. What I'm, do is I'm just going to get rid of the edge slightly and I'm going to get rid of the back edge as well, going right up to where the texture ends, like that. There we have a platform of perfectly textured material. <laughs> I say perfectly textured, very, very lightheartedly. So all we need to know is that this is our center point, and this is where, where we're going to be going from. This should line up perfectly in ADE, so 
what we're going to do is we're now going to go like this export as a 3d model um, I've got many many settings but collider is fine well, what are we going to call it well first I'm going to put it in some place that I know I can find so we're just going to call it sh ground Southampton ground okay now that will export as a collider file Okay, once we've got that exported as a collider file, what we're going to want to do is open up Model Converter X. Now I'm using the development release from like, I don't know, 10 years ago. It's quite an old release. Um, if you've got the latest dev or version 3, whatever the hell it is, that's fine. It'll all work the same way. My material editor might be a little bit different to yours, but in any way, shape or form, it's exactly the same. Okay, now let's dig through our textures, shall we? Pictures. About to get slightly embarrassed about what I've got in here. Yeah, look at that couple of uh, Dragon Ball Z stuff here and whatnot. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so I put that in a new folder, and it's called SH Ground. So let's try and find it. There it is. Drag that into Model Converter. Get rid of the window. Now the thing with Collider files, it does take a few minutes to load and register in Model Converter X, uh, but once it has done, it it works perfectly fine. It's all good. Okay, so there we have it. This is our model. As you can see, it's still raised off the ground slightly, which is all good. We don't need to worry about that too much. What we're going to do is just want to save the textures and um, make sure we can keep this main texture. Now, this texture, if we just exported it straight like this, it will look extremely blurry, you know, because it'll be this texture itself is 5,000 pixels in length, probably about 2,500 pixels in width. So it's going to look quite blurry. So what we're going to want to do is instead of just going ahead and straight exporting it out like this, going onto the textures and saving it, and you can see, look at that, 5000 by 207. So we're going to go back into SketchUp. We're just going to slice our shape in half, in half again, and in half along there, and then straight through the middle. What we're going to do now is take our eraser tool, hold down control, and get rid of those lines make sure you hold control because the lines don't actually disappear it just softens the edges what we're going to do now is just right click on the face and click on make unique texture okay there we are we now have these as unique textures if i bring the materials into view you can see that these are all unique textures, they're all different. We no longer need this one now, so we can just go ahead and delete it. So there we are, we have our unique textures. Let's go ahead and export that one more time. This, yeah, I think it was around there, that's it, that's it right there. I'm just gonna replace it don't need to be brave about any of that. And we're just going to go ahead and import the model a second time. Alright, there we go. Now we've got exactly the same as before, only this time we have a few more textures. We don't need the default colour, so let's just get rid of that. Now these textures are all the wrong size, you can see we've got all the warnings here in Model Converter X saying that it's not power of 2. So let's go ahead and make it power of 2. 1, 2, 5, 6. I like to save all of my ground textures as DXT because they're slightly more frame rate friendly in my experience. I'm not too sure if that's actually true. But yeah, in my experience they are all slightly more frame rate friendly. Okay, whilst we're in this little folder, what we can do is we're going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call it Southampton. Okay, there we go. Southampton. And inside there, a scenery. If I can spell it right. And a texture folder. There we are. Now that's where we're going to be saving our textures to, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, we don't need that one anymore. 
Southampton texture. Now when these save, these should save as 1024 by 1024. Should. At least that's the plan. If they don't, have to go through them all individually and make sure they're the right sizes for you. Oh no, it went completely the opposite way that I thought it would. They went to 1024 by 512, which is just fine as well. So yeah, now we have our textures all saved and ready to go. If you want to make um, night versions of your textures, you can go ahead and do that. That's absolutely fine. But I'm going to leave mine as just daytime textures for now because I'm just showing you how to do this. Nice and quick, nice and simple. Alright, so now we have a model. And we're going to go ahead and export that model. Grab Southampton. In the scenery folder, FSX MDL object file. Okay, now that is compiled. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump into ADE and we're going to double click on this and click on set by drag, making it appear as set manual. So we've now got the selection of these two. Take note of the heading as well, 21.0. Just jump back into the model converter. Ground polygon wizard. We're going to open up the model we just made. There it is. See how fast things load? <laughs> okay, now that is effectively a ground polygon. You can see the grid, which is crossing over it now. That is stuck to the ground. What we have to do is we have to put in the coordinates, the altitude, and the heading. The heading we know, 21.0. Thanks loudly to that. Okay, now coordinates are as easy as this. Make sure your ADE is running on decimal, because if you have it running on um, distance, day, time, whatever the hell it is, DDM, I don't know, um, then it won't work properly. Okay, just go ahead and deal with that. And same again for the, the longitude. Okay, unclick the group polygons every 500 meters. Make sure slice every 100 meters is selected and all the rest doesn't really matter too much, it, it really doesn't. <laughs> um, visibility, this is how far you can see the polygon from. So this is all in meters. If you want to see the polygon you know, on your approach to the airport then by all means have it up higher but for things that are final detail I like to leave it 10,000. Like I said this is just my personal preference it doesn't matter about yours too much. One more thing we need to get is the altitude. Quickest way to do that in ADE is to double click on a runway and boom there it is. Make sure your altitude is in meters um, unless Model Converter X specifies that it's in feet. Yeah, There we go. Now that's everything all ready to go. I've set mine at layer 12. Um, your base layer should be 8 but because I'm working with polygons which are usually going to be above a base layer. I'm working with 12. You can have your numbers set to anything you like, as long as it's not below 8. So, yep, let's just go ahead and click on Convert. Okay, that's now converted into a ground polygon. So what I've done now is I've just pulled that into um, my Active Scenery folder. I'm just going to jump straight into there right now and delete the MDL, we don't need that. Leaving us with shground.bgl. And all our textures are of course in there. So that's now effectively inside Flight Sim. Let's start her up and see where we can go with this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, close out Photoshop because we're not exactly needing it right now and all it's doing is slowing down my system. So yeah, we're just going to get rid of that. I don't want to save it. Okay, right. Uh, same can go for SketchUp, don't need that anymore. Nope, don't want to save it. And of course, MCX. Don't necessarily need that open either. Okay. So, let's jump in and activate that scenery. Get 
it should probably take a few seconds. There we are. Now hopefully this should all be in the right place. I'm not saying it is going to be in the right place. That's the one thing with the uh, ground texturing. It does take a few attempts to get it right on the first try. But um, once you do, once you do actually get it right, the results are quite frankly awesome. Might be here a while waiting for this one to load. You know, for some reason I have noticed that FSX doesn't enjoy um, being recorded in HD. I have noticed that. So, you know, while we're waiting, how are you? Good, good. So, uh, how's that new job looking? Nice. I don't have a new job. No, I'm still sat in front of my computer 24 hours a day, making tutorials, making scenery, making people not laugh. That's me. That's pretty much me. Oh, I, I was in hospital the other day. Yeah, yeah, I, I went to hospital. I had to... Uh, I'm on steroids now. Yeah, that that's right. I'm on steroids. Oh, we're here, here we are. Okay, so, yeah, um, I wasn't really prepared for this moment. Okay, let's just go, there we are. Oh, <laughs> see how prepared I was for that? Okay, let's move forward in this ultralight. Not too sure what end of the airport I'm at here. Um, eh, I think I'm at the right end. Yeah, let's just have a look. What's the worst that could happen, eh? Oh yeah, and boom, there we are, there we are. Um, Things are just about in the right place, I think. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. So yeah, as you can see, that, that didn't come out too badly. It's pretty much in the right place. Um, it's a little bit off with the parking lines. But that's all something that can be fixed a little bit later, as you may be able to tell. Um, it's only slightly, slightly to the right if we look at it from this way, so... Yeah, if I look at it from the upper end. But yeah, well, if we look at it from this way, it just needs to be shifted towards the left a little bit, or I should say the right even. Yep, I'm getting things wrong already. It just needs to be replaced properly. But still, yeah, that's exactly how you make something to sit in flight sim and make it look decent. Now, of course, I wouldn't make an entire airport this way. What I'd normally do is I'd get rid of the entire ground markings and all the detailing on the ground and things like that, leaving it just a base layer and then I'll put in a detail layer above that then above that I'll put in all the lines but still that's the quickest and easiest way that I could probably share with you on how to make detailed um, sections of ground. I hope you have enjoyed this and out of all of our little tricks of the trade there Photoshop making the texture into SketchUp to make the model ADE to get the general size and location Model Converter X to make the model and then finally make the ground polygon. I really do hope this has been a help for you. If you need to know anything else to do with scenery design, building, whatever, just comment below and I'll be happy to try and help you the best I can. So yeah, that's all from me for now. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I know I certainly didn't. <laughs> I was always so worried it was going to go wrong. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. My name's Mark from Sawfly Concepts. Um, remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch everybody later. Bye-bye!